Welcome back everyone to Machine Organization and Programming. I'm continuing to talk about the pointer array equivalents in this series of lectures. This is the third one uh, where we're going to be going into pointers and arrays. We've already talked about pointers in the memory model and arrays and how they are stored in memory. And again, this is a continuation of the examples from those first two lectures. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's dive into this. Here's what we're going to do next. I'm going to create a pointer to an array of integers. And um, to do that, it's just a pointer to an integer. Um, let's call this P A R R par from now on. Pointer to array right there. And when I initialize this, uh, I need to initialize all of my pointers, otherwise they're just pointing to random garbage memory because it's gonna, you know, there's something in the memory that it's reserving for that pointer. And I need to give it an address. And what we just saw is that arrays when used like this are actually addresses. This only worked because I needed to put in the address symbol for printf. Uh, so I do not need the uh, ampersand signed in order to access the array. This is actually going to give me an error because the address, wait, no it's not because this also worked. Hold on, this works? This works. Let me, let me show you. This works. Yeah, compile. Initializing int from incompatible pointer type. It's a warning. Unused variable. It does work though. Okay, so it's just noticing that these types don't match, but it does work. Um, wait, let me switch back over here. I've also got a huge array. I changed that to 25. I'm going to switch that back to 5. Um, this should also be good because ARR is also a pointer. Let's save that. Let's go compile this. Um, and now the only warning I'm here. This is uh, got a lot of stuff on the screen. The only warning I'm getting is that I haven't used um, my pointer to the array yet. Okay, so this is the preferred way to initialize a pointer to an array. And uh, now let me go ahead and use this. One of the things I can do with this is I can go ahead and use the pointer to print out everything in the array. So where I've got ARR here printing that out, I can use PRR. Um, yep, yeah, let me just do it this way. I think I got all the right things changed. Compile that. I should now be using it. No warnings. We'll run that. And what I see here is first I'm printing out my array, printing out some information about the actual array. It's uh, the first address. This is all the same stuff I just went over. Now, I'm also using the pointer to that array to print out the exact same information. And I'm using the exact same array index notation with brackets. Uh, we'll talk about a couple of different ways. The terminology for using brackets is called array index notation. So when I use brackets to access either an array or a pointer, and pointers can be accessed the exact same way with these brackets. And I'm getting the same value, 0, 10, 20, 30. The address of these guys, um, EEC, EEC. Oh, look, they moved. Awesome. Some of my pictures going to be bad now. But uh, the point is, uh, they've got the same addresses. All right, I, uh, let me print out one more thing. I didn't print out where um, my pointer to my array is stored. Uh, so let me go ahead and copy and paste here. This one's printing out information about the array. We'll do the same thing for pointer to the array. Uh, the pointer to the array is not going to Yep, so pointer to the array is uh, actually contains a memory address, so I do need the percent %p. And address of that is still an address. There we go. So now I'm printing out, yeah, all the right stuff. Let me go ahead and recompile. Run this again. And what I can see here is the pointer to the array, ef0, should be the very first address of the array, ef0. Also, where the array is stored and where the address of array is stored, those should all be the same. Okay, and that array is actually stored somewhere completely, I'm sorry, the pointer is stored completely somewhere else different in memory. So these two are the same, EF0, EF0, that's because this is the array. The pointer to the array gets its own address, so EEC in this case. Let me see, that would be, all right. EEC is going to come right before EF0. Let me go. Let me go put this in a picture. 
just staring at these numbers and hexes not working for me. Uh, I need a picture. One second, let me go make that. I've got everything in its new spot. So A is down here now at address uh, F10. Uh, B is at F0C, so this should match up with what we see here. 10, 0C, yeah, 08, 04. Okay, so those look good. I've got the array in. Array starts at EF0, EF0, and goes through F00, F00. Uh, looks good. And then my new pointer to the array is at address EEC. All right, there it is right there, EEC. Easy to put in now that I've got a picture. And the value it contains is EF0 right there EF0 um, so here let me grab another arrow we'll drop this up here because this is a pointer it points to that array just like that and then I'm covering up the text hopefully oh, you guys remember what that says um, so here's the idea it's a pointer to an array it's located at this memory address and when we dereference it we're getting array 0 and this using bracket notation just like we did our array index notation right here when we printed things out. Uh, you're right, right there, highlighted P array of index I. That basically is the same thing as dereferencing. And I'm going to do some math in the next PowerPoint slide uh, to talk about this specific uh, interaction between the array bracket notation and the pointer indexing and pointer arithmetic. So that's coming really soon. But I just wanted to like uh, put together this uh, PowerPoint picture, this one showing you that if I have a pointer to an array, it gets its own memory address. It points to the array in memory, and I can dereference it the exact same way I do with array bracket notation. The difference um, is that for array, I don't get a memory address for ARR. It, in fact, the compiler, if I ever request it, just gives me the first, well, basically the address of the first element back. No matter if I ask for the address of it, or if I just ask for the, its value, um, both of them return the same memory address. All right, so that's the, the first major difference between pointers and arrays. All right, the next thing I want to do is show you that I can also print this out, printf, using um, the pointer notation, pointer dereferencing. So if I dereference par, uh, that's going to be a decimal value. should be a zero because that's what's in array element zero. There we go. And um, yeah, that's all I want to print right here. So we'll just do star parr. Compile that and run this real quick. Make sure I'm not making mistakes. So I can also dereference. So I can use pointer notation to go grab the value right here. I believe this also works with, um, yeah, let me, let me just do one more thing. We'll also do it with dereference arr. And that is equal to decimal value. I'm going to have to edit this if this doesn't work. But I'm pretty sure it does because they're almost identical. Compile. Yep, okay. So we can also dereference the array like that. All right, next up, um, the next like major difference between pointers and arrays is that pointers are variables and arrays are essentially constant pointers, if we want to think of them like that. So here's one of the things I can do. I can go ahead and say here r equals the old value plus one more. This is going to move it one integer size. Yeah, in fact, let's print this out again. So we'll do that. And yeah, let me just run this with just this much. Find out where the next mistake is right here. Nope, looks good. Okay, so dereferencing PARR uh, is zero. Dereferencing the array is still zero. Then I did, hmm, I, want, I want one more line. Hold on. This line again. All right, there we go. So I've got it twice. Starts out zero, starts out zero. Um, it starts out pointing to EF0. EF0 was the array element zero. Then we incremented it. And now it contains the value EF4, which is actually the second one. So I, the line I did was um, par equals par plus 1. Now the compiler already knows that it's a pointer to an integer. And so it knows that the size of integer is 4 bytes. So it's automatically taken care of that and incremented it by 4, not just 1. Uh, I'll go back with a, a PowerPoint and walk through this a little more carefully. But it went from F0 to F4. 
it's because the compiler knows the size of integers on this computer is four bytes and so when we do reference this one um, I see that I now get the 10 because my pointer is now pointing to this memory location not the original one I upgraded I changed it uh, also note that the pointer is still at the exact same place EEC the pointer is at EEC so in the memory model I pull this one up what I did here was um, right here this value I incremented it so instead of this being EF0 it's now EF4 and my pointer let me grab my arrow is now pointing one spot down to right there that's all I did by changing the code uh, the pointer is still in the same memory location right here but it's now got a different value Whoops. here's the address EEC but the value is now different it points somewhere else uh, we can't actually do this with arrays. Arrays are constant pointers. So here's what I did. I've got par equals par plus one. If I do that with just the array, if I try and change where the array points, uh, I can't do this. This is going to give me a horrible compiler error. And like, actually, I think it might be one of the useful ones. Um, yep. Uh, assignment to an expression with the right type. So this is an assignment statement. I've got the equals there, single equals. Um, can't assign to an array. So that one's actually pretty useful. Okay, so this line right here is the one that totally failed. I cannot um, uh, assign to an array, and that's what this is doing. Um, these other two, two more options for incrementing an array. Um, par plus plus should work and par um, plus equals one or however many elements I want to ship by those are also going to reassign the value uh, to the next element in the array and shift it down uh, we can see this used a lot in like loops for example uh, let me go ahead and I'm gonna pause and just write one and show you using a, a pointer to index through an array one sec okay so we're looking right here I've just added a quick loop this is going to declare a pointer to the array, and it's going to start out pointing to the very first element of the array. Um, while it's not equal to the last element of the array, and this uh, is actually the array max is one element past the end of the array. So it'll still capture the last element. It'll get all the way 10, 20, 30, and 40. Um, so the notation here, uh, P is the actual address. And I'm comparing that to the address of the element one past the end of the array. Okay, so it's not equal to that. We're just going to keep doing stuff. And what we'll do is using each element one at a time. Uh, and all I'm doing is printing it out so we can see that it works. Uh, jump back over to PowerShell where I've already run this code. It took me a couple tries to get that totally right. I had some extra uh, typos in there. Um, but anyway, it's printing out 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. It stops. It's not an infinite loop. Things are looking good. The, the downside to doing it like this is we lose the access to which index we're looking at. By using a pointer, we no longer, unless we have a special counter that counts how many places along we are. So this is useful if we want to go through and do the same operation to every single element. Like if you're like working through an array of characters, a string, and you want to make them all uppercase or something, we don't really care what the, the index is. We just need a pointer to that um, to that character so we can change it. Uh, but we do lose uh, access to that um, to the index. An interesting way to do things. It's got some power to it, but has that disadvantage also.